In this video, I'm going to be showing you the apps I'm using to plan and fly my round the world trip later this year, how much they're all costing me, $7,714, and how I'm going to go about planning and executing all my flights using hopefully just an iPad as I fly around the world with the Australian Formula One Grand Prix as my backdrop if I don't get run over first. Sorry. Formula One and it's great living here in Melbourne in Australia because this is where the first Formula One race of the season is held. This is Albert Park and one month from now is when the Formula One cars are going to be racing across this start finish line for the very first race of the season at a lot faster than the 40 kilometers an hour we're allowed to drive along here when it's just being used as a regular road. So there's a whole heap of apps I'm using on the iPad as part of my round the world trip but I want to share with you the five main ones that I'll be using. So I'm also assuming by this point I've sorted out my clearances, I know where fuel is, I know which airports I'm going from and two and I want to get a high level view of what it's going to be like in a couple of days time to pick the best possible day I can to fly the first app I use is one called Windy now Windy is a brilliant app when you're looking at long range weather forecasts. the modeling that it does the graphic interface there are a couple of key features that I use if I take Melbourne where I am right now for example if you click on the city itself you'll see this little kind of graphic display of what the weather's going to be like over the next few days pop up at the bottom and instantly there you can just scroll through it and I can see you know when there's sunshine it's looking okay when there's a bit of rain it's not looking as nice and if you tap on this meteogram option underneath there as well what this gives you is a really cool kind of 3d view of what the atmosphere is going to be like for the next seven days and even further I think you can go 10 days out but say over the next couple of days I can look ahead and I can actually see what the cloud base is going to be like, what the cloud tops are going to be like, what the temperature is, what the pressure is going to be, the wind direction. Instantly you can get a really good idea of the high level weather but if you want to zoom out, if I'm covering a longer distance, what you can do is zoom out to the area that you're interested in, tap on this little three kind of lines icon on the right, go to clouds, go to low clouds and by scrolling forward through a few days you can actually see the patterns of the clouds over the area that you're planning to fly and I've used this in the past for up to three sometimes four days out and the accuracy of this is scary I reckon at least nine nine and a half nine point seven times out of ten this thing is spot on accurate when it comes to what the clouds are going to be and where the clouds are going to be as well as clouds you can see what predicted rainfall is going to be like where there's any predicted thunderstorms that come out as well you can also use this as a real-time radar for thunderstorm cells and large areas of precipitation which I use a lot in the cockpit and the final feature I love about Windy which I can't find on the iPad version but on the desktop version there's something called distance and planning and if you click on that you can actually draw out a rough idea of the route that you're expecting to take and again this panel pops up from the bottom and you can click on a VFR or IFR depending on the type of flying you're doing you click on one of those icons and you can see some really important bits of information like cloud bases cloud tops temperatures wind directions freezing level and the brilliant thing is you can scroll forwards and backwards over the next couple of days to see what Windy thinks the weather is going to be like what it's forecasting the weather to be like along your exact route that you're going to be flying it's an amazing tool we're going to talk about pricing in a minute but a spoiler alert I can't believe it's free something that useful and powerful should not be free I don't know why it is I don't know why I'm complaining about it anyway once I've used Windy to check the weather and I know which day I want to fly then I need to plan which actual route I'm flying and that's where it comes to my second app which is Avplan EFB and that's my primary flight planning app and how I use this is really really simple I put in my origin I put in my destination, I go to the map page and that draws a magenta line between the two. It's basically the shortest distance between those two airports. But that's obviously not the way you're going to fly. So I go through the different maps, whether I'm flying IFR or VFR. Sometimes I look at a combination of the two maps. I start to pick out my waypoints. I look at places that I might want to go from a sightseeing point of view. It's really good at showing FIR. So when I'm traveling internationally, a lot of the time you actually need to enter a new country's airspace via an actual waypoint. And picking those waypoints that lie on the FIR boundaries is really easy with Avplan. You just basically hold onto your magenta line, drag it to the waypoint that exists on the FIR our boundary let go and it adds it to your flight plan I also use Avplan before the flight to check things like the terrain that I'll be expecting to fly over the lowest safe altitudes or LSOLTS as we call them here in Australia if I am flying IFR and once I'm happy with that route I've basically then got a day that I know I'm flying from Windy the route that I'm going to be taking in Avplan 
All I need to do now is find out a way to actually file it. Now I can file the flight plan here in Australia and other countries using Avplan, but I can't file everywhere in the world. So for that, I need app number three. I think I can go through here. Let's just keep walking until someone says stop. It's the back of Pitt Strait. That's where all the teams will be based during the actual Grand Prix weekend. This big oval here, and this is where a lot of the merchandise stands are. A lot of the car companies base themselves down here with displays. This big area over here, that's the hospitality tent. That's the Formula One paddock club. I don't get in there. App number three that I use and will be using is called Rocket Route. Now I use Rocket Route for flight plan filing. So I've got my route planned out in Avplan like you just saw, and all I do is I copy that into Rocket Route and I can do two things. Firstly, I can click on this validate or auto route button, which will use Rocket Route's database of routes that it knows is valid, especially through places like Europe. Have you ever tried to file a flight plan through Europe through Euro Control? Woo! Once you've validated your route, if you have to, I can then file it through Rocket Route. And Rocket Route will file a flight plan for me for any FIR, for any country anywhere in the world. Now the other thing I like about Rocket Route is I can get something called a briefing pack and what that allows me to do is once I've got my flight plan submitted I can click on this briefing pack button and what that does is outputs a whole bunch of documentation that will help me with my flight. Things like weather briefings, NOTAMs or notice to airmen which tells me what's happening along the route that I'm flying, gen deck or a general declaration which you have to fill in when you're flying from one country to another, a GAR form, a general aviation report. Any of you ever flown in and out of the UK, you would have dealt with GAR forms and you know what happens when you land in the UK without a GAR form. Although I've never done that before ever in my life. Right, Philly? So now I've got the weather, I know which day I'm flying, I know which way I'm going, I've submitted my flight plan, I've got all my documents for the handler on the ground, I'm basically jumping into the aircraft at this point, which is why I still need the iPad because there's two more apps that are really critical to my flying. I just, I really want to show you more of the Formula One. I think it's really exciting when they're setting it all up down here. I mean, I'm going to be down here for the Formula One. Let me know in the comments below if you're going to be down as well. Who's your favourite team? Mercedes. What, well, mine too? Amazing. And the Formula One circuit goes right round the lake. You can probably see it over the other side there. And this area in the middle where we are now, this is kind of the entertainment zone. This is where you have your lunch. There's normally a stage over there with music that's played really loud. Oh my God, I sound really old. Anyway, the fourth app that I use is Garmin Pilot. And there's a really simple reason why I also have a subscription to Garmin Pilot. Probably twofold. One is that I can update all my databases in the GTN 650s through the Garmin Pilot app. So for example, for this round the world trip, I need a worldwide navigation database. And the easiest way to update the 650s is through something called Flightstream, which is a little wireless card, which allows me to basically download the database on my iPad. And when I sit in the cockpit, any updates can stream via Wi-Fi and Bluetooth directly into the GTN 650s. And then the second reason why I have Garmin Pilot on my iPad is because when I've got that route in Rocket Route, I can copy it, paste it into Garmin Pilot, and then I can directly send it from the iPad into the GTN 650 navigation unit. And what that means is, no, it's not just a case of, oh great, you can save like two minutes of typing it all in. Why would you pay to do that? For me, it's not about the speed that you gain, it's the fact I'm not typing it in twice. So I've got a flight plan that's been validated and approved, and then all I need to do is send that flight plan from Garmin Pilot into the aircraft. I'm not typing it in again. There is still one more critical app that I use on my iPad, and especially when you're flying long distances and through multiple countries, you don't want to be taking stacks and stacks of paper and charts with you. I'm going to be using what's called Jeppesen FD. I think that's flight deck. It's basically my runway diagrams, my taxi charts, information about the airports I'll be going to, but also things like approaches. I don't want to be having stacks and stacks of paper and binders sitting next to me and all that extra weight in the cockpit. Now at this stage, I hope, I really hope actually, especially if you're learning to fly, I hope you're asking yourself a couple of questions. I hope you're asking, hang on a minute, what happens if his iPad 
breaks? If his iPad overheats whilst he's flying? What happens if his iPad runs out of power? If you're not asking yourselves those questions, you should be because those things can and will and have happened to me in the past. What happens if I drop and break the iPad or it stops working? Well, I'm taking a backup. I have two iPads, identical iPads. Every time I run an update on one, I run an update on the other. Second thing is power. Now I have USB power in Echo Yankee Zulu at the moment, just through one of those cigarette lighter adapters, but we're gonna be putting two USB ports into the dash so I have power all the time and thirdly then overheating well I won't have the iPad exposed to the Sun all the time it's not going to be mounted on the window it's actually going to sit on my lap and when I'm not using it I close it and I put it next to the seat and I'll show you next time I fly there's actually the air conditioning output in Echo Yankee Zulu you can direct downwards and I blow that at the iPad so there's very little danger of it overheating So I said I'd talk about costing and how much this is all costing me. I want to be really open with you here on the channel. So, Windy, as I said at the beginning, it's free. It doesn't cost anything. It probably should. It's amazing. If you're not using it already, use Windy. With Adplant EFB now, I will be honest with you, they have given me access to the worldwide data subscription package for free. So Adplant, thank you. If you're not a user and you want to try it out, I'll put a link in the description below to the free trial they have on their website. Give it a go. I really genuinely like it not just because they've given me access for free, but like I say, I was a customer before. I'll put up on the screen how much it does cost if you do want to get one of the packages, say just here in Australia or a New Zealand package, they have a worldwide subscription. For Rocket Route, now I use what's called the Piston Plan Worldwide. To be able to file a flight plan anywhere in the world, for a year, it's costing me 349 US dollars. A lot of money in itself, don't get me wrong, but I actually think that's a pretty reasonable price for the power that I get of being able to file that flight plan anywhere in the world. Now with Garmin Pilot, because I've got two navigation units, you do need two copies of the database and it can get quite expensive. Garmin do have this good offer which is called the Worldwide Standard Pilot Pack, which I can get for $1,780 through their website. Now again, a lot of money, but remember you're talking about navigation data for the whole world. And on top of that, you also get access to Safe Taxi, which is all of their taxi diagrams, their obstacle and terrain databases. And then finally with Jefferson, now I did actually originally ask for a quote for Jefferson FD charts and to be able to have the charts and all their navigation data on what's called my MFD, my multi-function display. That's one of the big screens on the front of Echo Yankee Zulu. The price that they quoted me for all the charts on the iPad and all the charts in the aircraft was $7,714. So I'm not gonna have the charts in the aircraft, I'm only gonna have the charts on my iPad, which is fine, that's how I normally do it anyway. But I've added it up, looking at all the different regions that I'll need, and with Jefferson, the total cost is gonna to come to $2,535. Some honorable mentions before I go as well. Now, Sky Demon, I've mentioned, for flight, Oz Runways, these are really good apps as well. I just don't have a subscription to them and I'm not gonna be using them on my trip, but I'm sure a lot of you do as well. And they are really good apps from the limited use I've had of all three of them. And let me know any other apps you think I can put on my iPad for the trip, things that you think might help me as well. I mean, Netflix is probably quite a good one because some of those legs are gonna be quite long. Click on that subscribe button if you're not subscribed to the channel already. Give us a like if you found that useful. And if you're coming to the Australian Grand Prix, I might see you here.